Okay, thank you boys and girls for settling down. Could you do to eat your breakfast? We are continuing Esperanza Rising. We are, let's see, what chapter are we in? Um, I think we're in the, the, the onion chapter. So it's, it's a long one, yeah. Las the bolas. Anyway, um, and remember, Esperanza has to stay home and watch the babies. While Isabel, um, so watch her, um, Alfonso's cousin's babies, anyway. Um, while Isabel goes to school. But to, so today or yesterday, I don't, don't know if it's the next day yet, anyway. Um, she's learning how to do things. She's learning how to wash the, the diapers. She's, she had to admit to Isabel that she'd never wash laundry before right because i was like haven't you ever washed laundry and she's like that's that's what i had other people for i had other people to wash laundry i didn't have to do that so um it was so she had to admit that she had never washed her own laundry before and then um and then she didn't want to admit to isabel because part of esperanza's job right is to sweep the platform and they pay her a little bit of money for that um, Kale, you're going to need to go wash your hands. Um, they pay her a little bit of money or take money off the rent for sweeping the platform. And she didn't have to, or uh, she didn't want to admit to Isabel that she'd never even swept before. So um, she said, she said, well, I'll just figure it out, right? Can't be that hard. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> Isabel sat with the babies while Esperanza went to sweep the platform. The camp was quiet, and even though it was late in the day, the sun was unrelenting. She retrieved the broom and stepped onto the wooden floor. Dried and brittle onion skins were everywhere. In her entire life, Esperanza had never held a broom in her hand. But she'd see Hortensia sweep, and she tried to visualize the memory. She could, it couldn't possibly be that hard. She put both hands near the middle of the broomstick and moved it back and forth. It swung wildly. Brayden, what are you playing with? Whip. Right? She swung wildly. The motion seemed awkward, and the fine dirt on the wooden planks lifted to a cloud. Onion jackets flew into the air instead of gathering together in a neat pile like Hortensia's. Esperanza's elbows did not know what to do. Neither did her arms. She felt a stream of perspiration slide, sliding down her neck. She thought so sweat sliding down her neck because it's hot. She, sweat, she stopped for a moment and stared at the broom as if willing it to behave. Determined, she tried again. She hadn't noticed that several trucks were already unloading workers nearby. Then she heard it. First a small tittering, then louder. She looked, turned around. A group of women were laughing at her. And in the middle of that group was Martha. Pointing. La Cenicienta. Cinderella, she laughed. Burning with humiliation, Esperanza dropped the room and ran back to the cabin. In her room, she sat on the edge of the cot. Her face flushed against the thought of, her ridicule, of the ridicule. She was still sitting there, staring at the wall when Isabel found her. I said I could work. I told Mama I could help, but I cannot even wash clothes or sweep a floor. Does the whole camp know? Isabel sat down on the bed next to her and patted her back. Yes. Esperanza groaned. I will never be able to show my face. She put her head in her hands until she heard someone else come into the room. Esperanza looked up to see Miguel holding a broom and dustpan, but he wasn't laughing. She looked down and bit her lips so she wouldn't cry in front of him. He shut the door, then stood in front of her and said, How would you know how to sweep a floor? The only thing you ever learned was how to give orders. It's not your fault, Enza. Look at me. She looked up. Pay attention, he said, his face serious. You should hold the broom like this. One hand here and the other here. Esperanza watched. Then you push it like this or pull it towards you. Here, you try, he said, holding out the broom. Slowly, Esperanza got up and took the broom from him. She, she, he positioned her hands on the handle. She tried to copy him, but her movements were too big. Smaller strokes, said Miguel, coaching, and sweep all in one direction. She did as he said. 
Now, when you get all the dirt into the pile, you'll hold the broom down here near the bottom and push the dirt into the pan. Esperanza collected the dirt. See, you can do it. Miguel raised his thick eyebrows and smiled. Someday, you might just make a very good servant, Isabel giggled. Esperanza could not yet find the humor in the situation. Somberly, she said, thank you, Miguel. He grinned and bowed. At your service, Mirena. But this time, his voice was kind. She remembered that he'd gone to look for work at the, uh, at the railroad. Did you get a job? His smile faded. He put his hands in his, back, in his pockets and shrugged his shoulders. It's so frustrating. I can fix any engine, but they will only hire Mexicans to lay track and dig ditch, ditches, not as mechanics. I've decided to work into the fields until I can convince someone to give me a chance. Esperanza nodded. After he left the room, Isabel says, he calls you Mirena. Will you tell me about your life as a queen? Esperanza sat down on the mattress and patted the spot next to her. Isabel sat down. Isabel, I will tell you about how I used to live, about parties and private school and beautiful dresses. I will even show you the beautiful doll my papa bought me. If you will teach me how to pin diapers, how to wash, and... Isabel interrupted her. But that's so easy! Esperanza stood up and carefully practiced with the broom. It is not easy for me. Las almendras. Almonds. My neck hurts. Ay, my neck hurts, said Mama, as she massaged the back of her head with her hand. It's not my neck, it's my arms that are sore, said Hortensia. It's the same for everyone, said Josefina. When you first start in the sheds, the body refuses to bend, but in time you will get used to work, to the work. Everyone had come home that night tired with various aches and pains. They gathered in one ca ca cabin for dinner, so it was noisy and crowded. Josefina warmed a pot of beans and Hortensia made fresh tortillas. Juan and Alfonso talked to about the fields while Miguel and Isabel played with the babies, making them squeal with last laughter. Mama cooked a rose. Esperanza was surprised that Mama knew how to brown it first in oil with onions and pepper. Esperanza chopped tomatoes for salad and hoped no one would mention the sweeping. She was glad the day was over. Her bruises had just been to her pride. Isabel took a pressed tortilla, sprinkled it with salt and rolled it up like a cigar and waved it. At Miguel, how come you and Tia Alfonso won't let me go behind the cabin with you? Shh, he said, it's a surprise. Why are you so full of secrets, asked Esperanza. But neither Alfonso nor Miguel answered. They simply smiled while they prepared their plates. They ate dinner, but before they could slice a cantaloupe for dessert, Alfonso and Miguel disappeared with instructions not to follow them. What are they doing, demanded Isabel. Hortensia shrugged as if she knew nothing. Miguel came back just before sunset. Senora and Esperanza, we have something to show you. Esperanza looked at Mama. It was obvious that Mama was just as was confused as she was. They all followed Miguel where Alfonso was waiting. Behind the cabin was an old oval wash tub with one end cut off. It had been set on its side, forming a little shrine and a plastic statue of our Lady of Guadalupe. Someone had built a grotto of rocks around the base of the tub. Okay, so they, they took a wash, let's see, an old oval wash tub. So they took a wash tub and it was cut in half, okay, um, and set on its side like this. Okay, so there's the edge of the wash tub. Right, and then Our Lady of Guadalupe was in the middle. Okay, she's cheap at that. Okay, and then um, somebody built a grotto of rocks, so they built up rocks around the base. Around it, a large pot of earth had been uh, 
fenced in by sticks and rope and planted with thorn, thorny stems, each with only a few branches. Isabel gasped. It's beautiful. Is that our statue? Okay, and then, they, and then next to it was... Um, little thorny stems, okay? So what do you think those are? The little thorny stems that are planted all around it. What do you think those are? Um, those like stems. You think it's roses? Yeah, like roses. Does anybody, does anybody think you need something differently? Or do you all think it's kind of roses? Ruby, you think something different? I cannot hear you, sweetie. So you just think like just like flowers, like the rose flowers. Okay, what do you think? A cactus. Okay, that makes sense when it says thorny thorny stems. I see how you could get that. Okay, Isabel gasped. It's beautiful. Is that our statue? Josefina nodded, but the roses came from far away. Esperanza searched Miguel's face, her eyes hopeful. Papa's? Yes, these are your Papa's roses, said Miguel, smiling at her. Alfonso had done circles of earth and around each plant, casitas, little houses that made moats for deep watering, just like he'd done in Agua Calientes. But how? Esperanza remembered that the rose garden, remembered the rose garden as a blackened graveyard. After the fire, my father and I dug down to the roots. Many were still healthy. We carried the cuttings from Aguas Calientes. That's why we had to keep them wet. We think they will grow. In time, we will see how many they will, will bloom. You need to go? Oh. As Franza bent, bent closer to look at the stems rooted in mulch, they were leafless and stubby, but lovingly planted. She remembered the night before the fire when she'd seen the roses but, and had wanted <laughs> to ask Hortensia to make rose hip tea, but she'd never had a chance. Now if they bloomed, she could drink the memories of the roses that had known Papa. She looked at Miguel, blinking back tears. Which one is yours? Miguel pointed to one. Which one is mine? He smiled and pointed to the one that was closest to the cabin wall and already had a makeshift trellis propped against it. So you can climb, he said. Mama walked up and down, carefully touching each cutting. She took Alfonso's hands in her own and kissed him on each cheek. Then, Amy, shh. then she went to Miguel and did the same. Same, Muchas gracias, she said. Mama looked at Esperanza. Didn't I tell you that Papa's heart would find us wherever we go? All right, I think that's where we have to stop. There's no other good stopping point, so that's the best. All right, so we'll stop here. We'll continue tomorrow and see where it's going. <coughs> Amy, that's really gross. Can you make it stop making that noise? No, that's, that's the sound I always use. <laughs> <laughs>